thank you chairpersons uh, good evening respected seniors dear friends at the onset i would like to thank dr bansi sabu and the whole team who has been taking care of this excellent meeting and i acknowledge each and every one of you for being here till this evening it's really pleasure to see so many people around here for this meeting most of the things have been already discussed as far as fdc triple the combination is concerned and i'm just going to focus on rifaglinide voglibos and metformin and i can assure you uh, there is no financial disclosure for this particular presentation this is the outline of my presentation diabetes mellitus overview currently available therapies conventional versus combination unmet needs i'll go fast for this uh, uh, slides and then i'll focus on postprandial hyperglycemia and other stuff so diabetes is definitely a big burden and as arun said very categorically the number of years of new onset diabetes is decreasing very rapidly this is a real measure of concern because the complications are, are also going to increase at a very early age of onset if not well managed and diabetes uh, indian scenario we all know that not only the number of people are increasing but the number of people with poor control of diabetes is also increasing that is also a very big concern and india accounts for one in seven of all adults living with diabetes these are the current oral therapies and i also added the oral semaglutide which is available today and you can see they are all having advantages and disadvantages they are very well been discussed <coughs> now why combination therapy because initial combination therapy gives a lot of advantages we have a very very interesting study verify study which was done with vildagliptin and metformin and that very categorically said that if you start even at an hba1c of 7.3 and 7.5 with a combination you get a very good hba1c and not only a very good control but durability of treatment is also pretty good that means you are holding on the pathophysiology of the disease and greater hba1c reduction with initial combination therapy than the con conventional therapy and even the as guidelines very categorically suggest right here that for a glycemic control if your hba1c is more than 9% or 1.5% above the goal start two to three agents so it's not that the uh, they are, we don't have uh, references uh, we have good references now as well unmet needs optimal ppg control sustained glycemic control meaning to say durability patient will say doc sir aapka medicine जब स्टार्ट करते हैं ना थोड़े दिन काम करता है उसके बाद छः महीने के बाद फिर काम करना बंद कर देता है यू नो दैट इज द टाइप ऑफ कंप्लेन दे विल हैव सो सस्टेन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिड्यूज डायबिटीज इज यूज माइक्रो एंड माइक्रो वैस्कुलर कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड आई टेल यू वी कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट बीटा सेल प्रोग्रेसिव डिक्लाइन विद सल्फन एलविया बट इफ यू सी द यू के पी डी एस डेटा विच वॉज फर्स्ट एक्चुअली कमेंटेड ऑन द डिक्लाइन इन द बीटा सेल फंक्शन and all the three arms patients who were on sulfonylurea or metformin or insulin there was a similar beta cell decline in all the three arms so sulfonylureas were not the drug which were responsible for decline in the beta cell function it was also in the metformin arm it was also on the insulin arm so it's a nature of the disease which actually causes progressive decline in the beta cell we should hold on there is no reference to till date where we suggest that sulfonylurea as glimepiride or any in fact uk pds use glibenclamide they started with clopropramide and they uh, switched over to glibenclamide and they compared with metformin and insulin so you can imagine they never ca caused uh, progressive decline in beta cell uh, compared to other drugs so postprandial hyperglycemia is a real challenge where we have lot of food especially carbs and they are uh, very very important factor for increase in the patient will say my fasting is 170 but pp well, should up to 220 230 so that is really a big challenge and we need to modify their diet uh, especially the carb contents of the diet needs to be modified and if, uh, if in spite of modifying the carb content you should actually think about the drugs which are available for controlling the postprandial glucose this is how the insulin secretion happens after the meal glute to uh, transporters glycolysis of the glucose enters glucose the, the glucose enters enters goes glycolysis atp production it closes the sodium potassium channel then it also actually expulses the potassium inside the cell and allows calcium to calcium gated channels to open up and that leads to exocytosis of the insulin 
and this is how the normal insulin is first phase and the second phase this is ha this happens in normal but uh, in patient with type 2 diabetes the first phase of insulin is first loss loss of first phase insulin is the earliest and then which actually is responsible for ppg high ppg and hba1c we all know is a measurement of both fpg and ppg and you will see in the next slide that as we come nearer to the hba1c the ppg has a major contribution so this is what is very very important to understand that once we have come down from 10% to 8% now it is your turn to look after the postprandial glucose and postprandial glucose is related to cardiovascular mortality a very interesting data from decode study group which very categorically suggest, suggested that as your postprandial is high and your uh, cad incidence is high and you can have a very interesting data where even a igt a, a pre diabetic with a high Uh, postprandial glucose of 170 and 180 has got a similar cardiovascular uh, risk than a patient with type 2 diabetes so morbidity mo mortality related to post challenge and postprandial glucose there are a lot of study decode study chicago study diabetes intervention program so coming back to our topic ripaglinide hoglibos is instrumental in impro improving ppag ripaglinide is a non sulfonylurea in insulin secretagogue it's a rapidly acting <coughs> and short acting and the important thing is it is not excreted via the kidneys so even a patient if he has got a chronic kidney disease it's going to be safe and since uh, has a shorter du uh, duration of action the chance of hypoglycemia which is a concern you heard in each and every lecture regarding hypoglycemia in sulfonylurea is less with ripaglinide so ripaglinide is mainly a non sulfonylurea secretagogue for postprandial control similarly voglibos is another one which we all know actually delays the absorption of glucose from the gi tract so both together are very very instrumental combination in actually controlling uh, patients who have got high ppg and that is how this combination has be, has got a very important role in one subset of patients where you have a hba1c 8% 7.8% but not 6.5% there this is a class of drug which can be used very very safely there are lot of data to support that and ripaglinide plus boglibos combination add on to metformin provides glycemic control and this is even the consensus statement on management of postprandial hyperglycemia in clinical practice even the rssda guidelines will suggest that for postprandial hyperglycemia agi glinides inhibitors are the drug of choice and most of the this is a case study which is very very interesting patient 55 year old male 28 kg per meter square <coughs> bmi type 2 diabetes for 5 years on metformin with hba1c of 8.5% for this gentleman i think 6.5% and less will be a good hba1c with fasting 160 and 240 a very very ideal combination and you can see this patient on follow up has got a good hba1c after 3 months and fpg and ppg both and if you see the further follow up also they do pretty well even in elderly population where there is a physiological decline in uh, Uh, renal function this is a very good class of drug compared to even glimepiride which is a longer acting drug so chances of hypoglycemia is also less so patient again uh, from <coughs> 7.8% hba1c came down to 6.9% and never reported a hypoglycemia so the key take away is diabetes mellitus is the most common metabolic disorder worldwide the global prevalence of diabetes has led to widespread multi system damage and postprandial glucose is an important component that contributes to rise in hba1c and conventional therapy alone does not provide effective control of ppg combination therapy with ripaglinide plus voglibos and metformin so sustain glycemic control so i thank you all for your patience listening and i thank